welcome you to the today's lecture on marine hydrodynamics. Today we will emphasize on some of the application as one of the application of the conformal mapping that is uh, the Zukowski transformation is hydrofoil section. So, in the last two classes we know that by using Zukowski transformation we can map each point on a circle to each point on a ellipse and also by using the corresponding inversion formula we can map each point outside a circle to each point outside an ellipse. Further we have seen how flow past a circular cylinder using the same transformation the flow past a circular cylinder knowing the results of the flow past a circular cylinder we can also know the results associated with the flow past an elliptic cylinder. Further we have seen that uh, from the elliptic cylinder flow past an elliptic cylinder we can easily get the flow past a plate. So, this is uh, so this is the beauty of the Zukowski transformation. Today we will look into co more complex situation where we can still apply the Zukowski transformation to aerofoil sections and in this because the com the cambered aerofoil the so called aerofoil section is more complex in nature. So, but it is quite interesting to see that by through a suitable transformation again we are able to of the suitable uh, arrangement of the Zukowski transformation from a circle we can map as to an aerofoil section. We will consider two cases today we will emphasize on a symmetric aerofoil section and next we will uh, discuss about the cambered aerofoil. So, this uh, let us see what exactly I mean a aerofoil. So, I will think of the definition will concentrate what is an aerofoil section. <coughs> a, a, sec, a section any section of the wing of the wing of the aircraft any section of the wing of an, of an aircraft cut by a plane parallel to the exact plane is called an aerofoil section. So, this is a section I just say if what is how I describe the exact plane this is my exact plane and this is the y direction. So, what I want to say that So, this is a wing span and this is the airport section. Okay. So, basically this is what an airport. Now, what we are looking here, here the this aerofoil section if we know that it gives us an idea about how we can design the wings 
and one of the advantage is that some of the points I will mention here that potential theory basically in potential theory we assume that the fluid is uh, irrotational in nature this potential theory will not able to predict potential theory will not predict the drag forces potential theory. Sorry, will not be able to predict the the drag forces on an airplane. And this is, however, this is because of the reason that we have seen that. Uh, this is uh, well defined by the D L Lambert's paradox because uh, because uh, it will not give you exact uh, the potential theory when the body is submerged in a fluid, so it will uh, gives a contradictory result. So this potential theory will not be able to predict the drag forces on the aerofoil. So to overcome this uh, idea, Prantel develop the boundary layer theory and the details we will talk uh, later about the boundary layer theory, but uh, so that uh, the we can always calculate the drag forces uh, there we have to take into account the viscosity phase. On the other hand the lift and the moments the lift and moments on the aerofoil. due to the pressure variation can be easily computed. Can be easily be predicted using the viscous invisible flow of Potential flow assumption in the potential flow theory. Here I would like to highlight few more things. Let me just say what are the sections of an aerofoil because this is the aerofoil. Let me say what are the many sections of this. So if I just uh, consider this. If this is a cumbered aerofoil, if this is J, this is a B, this thickness that is called T. So we call a as the leading edge B as the trailing edge these are some of the common terminology and T is the length of the cord And then we have L length of the cord. Now, this is a some of the common terminology of this section, aerofoil section. Now, when when the aerofoil is placed in an uniform flow, basically some more points 
when the error file is placed in an uniform flow it develops a differential pressure develop a differential pressure across its surfaces. With the lower surface having a larger pressure, having a larger pressure compared to the upper surface. In fact, this com in fact, this uh, differential in pressure this differential pressure distribution is the perhaps the is the origin of the lift force acting on this aerofoil. So, we have less more pressure here less pressure here. So, automatically it will be act as a lift force because uh, on the upper side there is less pressure on the lower side there is more pressure. So, it will try to lift the surface that is what. So, with this uh, background about uh, little background about the aerofoil today we will discuss about the classical aerofoil section first we will uh, concentrate on the symmetric aerofoil section see how we can construct a aerofoil section using symmetric aerofoil section. Uh, before going to this because uh, one may say that why we are talking about aerofoil theory here because uh, in this course of hydrodynamics because there is an analogy in fact uh, the aerofoil theory is very much analogous to the hydrofoil theory except uh, density difference. That is one of the reason we try to uh, understand the aerofoil theory, aerofoil section well, then we can easily apply the same concept to the hydrofoil. That is why the aerofoil theory we will discuss here. So, now with this, uh, now let us see how we can apply the uh, transformation, how can symmetric aerofoil section, how can we get it by using a suitable transformation from a circle. Now, let us uh, do one thing here. Let us consider a consider large consider a circle. And in this case, because we have seen from a circle we can get to an ellipse. So, what we will do here? I will consider as if this is the axis, x axis, and this is the z plane, this is my i y and then suppose what I will do 
let p be any point on this and o is the origin and let let me say c that is the center of the circle. So, the there is a but there is a horizontal shift from the origin to the right side. Now, if I join this point and join this point. Now, what is this distance O c? Let me say this is p, this is say n. Then what will happen? Because we have O p that is the radius of the circle, let the radius of the circle a. So, if you see the it is the radius of the circle is a, then center is at c, say radius is a, then we have let me call this distance n o as b. and O C as B is a fractional shift, is a fraction, we call it a fractional shift B E. Now, N O V B then we have, we can always say A is equal to B plus B E, we have A is equal to B plus B E. So, it is clear that the circle will pass through this point n. Now, if p is the point on the boundary of the circle, then we have let me say this angle is theta, this angle is theta. So, and this is r. So, we have O p is r. Now, what we will do? Let me recast the whole thing and let me put a let me take the whole thing here. We have here just a this is O, this is C, this is the point P. Sorry. This is the point P and then let me draw a perpendicular from this to this and then I call this as p prime. Then we have O c j b let me set this angle as gamma. So, this angle is gamma. Now, this angle is theta. Then we have let me say expand this. So, let this angle be theta prime that means, this is angle theta prime. So, we have theta is not equal to theta prime as then further we have and let me say that since uh, a is the radius of the circle then this O p C p is a we have C p is a when C p is a then we have r is so we have r is o p which is nothing but o p prime plus p prime p double prime this is this plus this this is the total r so then we have what is o p prime if I look at that O p prime, so this is a this is a now we have O p prime this angle is gamma. No, sorry, if I say O p prime will be hum, oh, okay, let me say this is B e this angle is theta, this is a perpendicular. So, this is B e means so then O p prime we have can I call it as 
b e cos theta then further p prime p p prime p p prime p is a cross so in the process we have r is equal to o p prime plus p prime prime that is b e cos theta plus a cos gamma then now since uh, the shift is very small so this angle gamma can be considered as very small and if gamma is small then cos gamma is equal to 1 and which implies which implies once this is small and from this we can say r is equal to r is equal to b e cos theta plus a cos gamma a cos gamma which is equal to b e cos theta plus a because cos gamma is small then what will happen to and again a is equal to which i can write it as b e cos theta we have already seen our a is equal to b plus b a is equal to b plus b so which implies my r by b r by b is 1 plus e plus e cos theta which implies b by r is equal to 1 by 1 plus e plus e cos theta and which is equal to 1 minus if I expand it in a uh, by the middle expense if I do 1 minus e plus 1 minus e into 1 plus cos theta plus e square by 2 cos theta square plus standard higher powers. So, which uh, I can always write because e is small is a fraction so e square will be negligibly small so this will give me 1 minus e minus e cos theta so here the ratio r by b is 1 plus e cos theta that is one relation and another relation is I'll say r b by r and again b by r is 1 minus e now with this understanding of about r by b and b by r i will proceed a little further now we will go back to the zucoske transformation that means in the zeta plane f zeta is equal to z plus b square by z so writing z is equal to r e to the power i theta we have seen that we can always write it z is r e to the power i theta plus b square by r minus i theta which gives rise to because this is b into r by b plus b by r into cos theta plus i times b into r by b minus b by r sin theta and which implies so zeta is nothing but xi plus i eta and that gives us
i is b times r by b plus b by r cos theta and eta is b times r by b minus b by r into sin theta. Now, for again, now what we will do? We will substitute for r by b and b by r and that will give us that will give us zeta is equal to rather I will say because we have already i is equal to 2 b cos theta and eta is equal to 2 b e into 1 plus cos theta into sin theta just substituting for r by b substituting for r by b and b by r so now what is happening here we have in the zeta plane we have initial we have a circle and here the center of the circle was the origin is something different than the center of the circle there is a horizontal shift and this distance was this is the distance which was b and this distance was b e and this what we have done from this it is in the z plane now in the zeta plane what we are getting this is our i y axis this is the x axis now in this plane this is eta plane this is eta i eta and if i look at this j is to be cos theta and then we can easily see that this will give us So, this is what I plot in the zeta plane this looks and I say this as a symmetric arrow pearl. Now, in this symmetric arrow pearl what is the total length? The length will be and again here if as a theta varies from 0 to pi to 2 pi. then we get the in z plane theta varies from then we in zeta plane we obtain the symmetrical of for a section. So, it can be seen that uh, this is a 2 b and then because it will vary from when xi is equal to theta is equal to 0. So, this will be 2 b and if theta is equal to pi it will be minus 2 b. So, the total length of this so, with chord length equal to 4 b. So, this distance is 4 b.
that total is a 4 b. Now, what will happen to the maximum thickness? If I want to know what is the maximum thickness, because let me do one thing again, I put it. Sorry. Let P be let be any point here. Q drive perpendicular from here and let me extend it here. Q Q prime. Now what will happen? My eta is given by because it is symmetric my eta is given by 2 b e into 1 plus cos theta into sin theta and then what will happen d eta by d theta. If I have d eta by d theta then that will give us 2 b e into 1 plus cos theta into cos theta and minus sin square theta and that is nothing but to be a that is 1 plus cos square theta minus sin square theta. So, that I can always write 2 cos square theta 2 cos square theta plus cos theta minus 1 and if d theta by d theta 0 that will give you the more point at which eta will attain the maximum value of theta for which eta will be maximum. So, d theta by d theta is 0 gives me implies 2 square theta plus cos theta minus 1 equal to 0 and if I make it as a product of two terms I can always write as this is 2 cos theta minus 1 to cos theta plus 1 so that will give you 2 cos square theta plus 2 cos theta minus cos theta cos theta so minus 1 so this is 0. So, which implies d eta by d theta is 0 or theta is equal to half or minus 1. Now, now what will happen if theta is equal to cos theta is equal to half or minus 1. Now, cos theta is equal to half gives implies theta is equal to pi by 3 and uh, if this is the case we can always see that further cos theta is equal to minus 1 cos theta is minus 1 means theta is equal to Now, it can be easily seen that it can be easily seen for theta is equal to pi by 2 pi by 3 it attains the maximum attains the maximum value. On the other hand or theta is equal to minus pi eta will be attains a minimum
So, we have seen that uh, if uh, theta is so basically eta will be 0 theta is minus pi because this quantity will give you. So, eta is 0. So, this point will be here this is the point that point I call it the arrow for this is r suppose and that is the trailing edge. So, theta is minus pi this will lead to this point r and if a theta is equal to pi by 3. So, if I say that some angle here. So, in the in the circular plane z plane if theta is equal to this angle theta this is the point p for theta is equal to pi by 3 for this angle theta is equal to pi by 3 in the zeta plane this is the z plane. So, in the z plane theta is pi by 3 corresponds to maximum eta and since it is symmetric. So, the total thickness will be 2 eta means uh, theta is pi by 3 then what is the maximum value of uh, eta at this point. So, the maximum eta will give me hence maximum thickness will be 2 times eta max that means 2 eta at theta is equal to pi by 3 and that will give us 2 times 2 b Two B into two two B E one plus cos theta one plus cos pi by three into sin pi by three and that will give me four P E into this is pi by three one by two plus one is into three by two and this is pi by three is root three by two. So, this is 2, 2, 4 cancel. So, this is 3 into root 3 into B. So, this is the this is the maximum thickness. Now, come back to the total core length. So, what is the core length? We have the core length that is 4 B. Hence, thickness to core length core ratio hence the thickness to thickness to chord maximum thickness rather maximum thickness to chord ratio and that will give us 3 into root 3 b e by b 4 b and that will give us almost 1.3 into E. So, this is only and this E now E is a fraction is a fraction which is very small Very small. Further, it may be pointed out that the maximum thickness, uh, thickness to chord length ratio, represents the thickness to Chord length ratio. This ratio is independent of. It only depends on the 
of B and only depends on on E. Often we call this E E often called it finance ratio. Called the fineness ratio. So, this is what uh, we have seen today that uh, by using this Zukoski transformation, we are able to transform. From a circular cylinder, from a circle, we are able to map a circle to an symmetric aerophile section. Sorry. Now, question comes, and here what we have done? We have done it that we have shifted the origin, there is a horizontal shift that distance is P e, this is the origin, this is the center of the circle. Now, question comes by a horizontal shift we are getting a symmetric aerophile section and just from a by using the Zukoski transformation and earlier we have seen by if we do not shift the origin then we are getting from a circle from the same circle sorry we are able to earlier we have seen that we are able to get a ellipse from a circle without going to the if we do not shift the origin. Now, what will happen again what will happen if we have a vertical shift both horizontal and a vertical shift. That means, I am looking for if I say I have a circle and uh, this is the origin, the origin here and I have not only a vertical shift, but I have a horizontal uh, not only a horizontal shift, but I have a vertical shift. If my C becomes this, then with this if I apply by saying that uh, who is the origin C is the center of the circle where where in which case we have a vertical shift and a horizontal shift with this understanding if I apply the Zukoski transformation what will happen. It is obvious that from this was symmetric this symmetric characteristics will be lost because we are putting it a little up. So, that means, my bottom side is appears to be oops, so there will be a shift in the bottom side and then horizontal part from the axis from this curve upper side the distance the height will go up on, but the lower side it will be there will be. So, this kind of aerophile section will call it such a cambered aerophile. We shall call it as a cambered aerophile and this cambered aerophile is the one because we have as I have mentioned that uh, the pressure on the lower side will be higher than the pressure on the upper side and perhaps this is the what we are looking for that means, our we are looking for a aerophile section where the which is a cambered one not a symmetric one and which will be more appropriate because we are looking for a surface where the surface lowers differential pressure is on the upper side pressure difference is less compared to that on the lower side and the flow there is a uniform flow and that will give help us in the design of the aerophile section.
and uh, with this and here also we will see that here the, the leading edge does not have a it the trailing edge has a sharp because the thickness of this trailing edge is becoming a 0 whereas, at the leading edge it is not so and it has a maximum thickness not at the end, but somewhere in the right side of the zeta axis j axis rather. So, now then like we have done what we will do that we will compare this then we knowing the flow past a circle suppose I, I say I have a uniform flow past a circle circular cylinder so knowing the uniform flow past a circular cylinder like we have done it we can we have earlier evaluated the uniform flow past a elliptic cylinder so in the same manner knowing the results for the uniform flow past a circular cylinder we can will be able to calculate the uniform flow past a aerofoil symmetric aerofoil section as well as aero anti as well as cambered aerofoil section and once we are able to know the complex velocity potential associated with the flow of a cambered aerofoil then easily we can easily find out how we will be able to calculate the forces lift force drag force that is acting on the aerofoil and since i have already mentioned that drag force will not be the most uh, it will not be predicted properly by the potential flow theory. So, we will be able to at least get a clear picture about what about the lift force and the movements that is acting on the aerofoil section. So, the details of which will uh, come in the next few classes. However, one of the major understanding of this uh, aerofoil section will give us a bit good understanding about how to design the wing section. So, wings of an aerofoil. And as I have mentioned, there is analogy between the aerofoil section with the hydrofoil section, except that there is a change in the pressure, uh, sorry, change in density. Hence, we by knowing the flow past an elliptic cylinder, we can always calculate the flow past a hydrofoil section, and it will also help the designer to design a proper aerofoil section, a, a hydrofoil section for more which will pro, which will be able to use. Um, almost all the hydrofiles. Another point here is the hydrofoil section is that this is a uh, this hydrofoil sections they are uh, unlike the bluff bodies like a cylinder or ellipse this hydrofoil sections they are sometimes streamlined bodies. the hydrofoils are they are streamlined bodies. A streamlined body. On the other hand, not a blob body. They are streamlined body but they are not like a blob body, not a blob body. So, this is another basic difference that, uh, so in fact it is because of this reason, because the structure is a streamlined body and uh, this hydrofoils or aerofoils are streamlined body. So, one can easily there will not be much of a flow separation, flow separation will not be there. 
but one of the other, another question comes what happened near the trailing edge what will happen near the trailing edge because it has a sharp edge there is a question that there can be flow singularity there can be flow singularity and this will address in the next class once we discuss in detail about the cambodia profile then we'll come to this to calculate uh, there is something called the zukowski hypothesis and then we will talk about kuta zukowski theorem so the zukowski hypothesis will give us the idea what will happen how the singularity in the flow will avoid near the trailing edge where there is a flow singularity and uh, again when we will go to kuta zukowski theorem by using this we will be able to know what is the flow uh, will be able to know what is the lift and the moment lift force and moment that is acting on the aeropel and that we will discuss in the next uh, classes. So, today we will stop here by assuming that uh, by using the by we have already discussed that using the Zukowski transformation we are able to get a symmetric aerofoil. However, we are looking for a cambered aerofoil and that we can do by applying the Zukowski transformation to the on a elliptic ellipse with a suitable from a circular cylinder we can get a cambered aerofoil by shifting the origin to the there is a little left a little right and then a little in the vertical direction. So, that will discuss the next classes and then we will come to the Zukowski hypothesis and Kuta Zukowski theorem that will give us a good understanding about the hydrofoil theory or the first initially the aerofoil theory and the same concept we can use for the hydrofoil theory. With this uh, we will stop today, thank you.